Hey there and welcome. This is a Tesla FSD firmware update video. A number of us uh, may have still been on 10.8.1 since roughly December. For In my case, I, I got 10.8.1 uh, in uh, December 24th, day before Christmas. Um, so I've had that now for about, uh, I don't know what that is, 60 plus days, which is quite a bit longer than it, you'd typically be on a single software update with FSD. They've been coming out every couple of weeks. I suspect what likely happened was the 10.9 rollout was paused or stopped with the initial group. As you know, they, they put out these firmwares in, in iterations and the NHTSA um, kind of forced the removal of, or the recall of the rolling stops, which was in FSD beta for a while. My hunch is that that's why a number of us did not receive 10.9. And so for some of us, 10.10 is the first FSD uh, beta update we've had since December. So super excited to see the software come down and we've got 10.10.2 downloaded. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to go through the release notes as a reminder of what we had in 10.8 and what we missed in 10.9, but should expect to enjoy now that we're on to 10.10. Let's start with 10.8. We had some, basically the headlines were that they were improving faster reflexes. So one of the release notes was improved photon to control vehicle response lat latency by 20% on average. So what that meant is from the moment that the light hits the the camera sensor to the moment that the car does something in response to it, they improve the speed of that by about uh, 20%. They improve their object attributes network, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's when it sees something, it applies a number of attributes to it. You know, what is its speed? What is its relative location? I can only guess what the attributes are, but they've improved that network to reduce false cut-in slowdowns by 50% and lane assignment errors by 19%. So the important, the big one there, in my opinion, is the false cut in errors. Uh, so prior to 8.1, if you'd seen a vehicle off in the distance, just approach the road, the vehicle would stop. I mean, prematurely, and it would be uncomfortable for you there, especially if you were in traffic. So that was reduced. I did notice that a little bit. There were also fewer false slowdowns for crossing objects. Um, they said reduce slowdowns for crossing objects by improved velocity estimates for objects at the end of visibility and reduced false slowdowns by adding geometric checks to cross validate lane assignment of objects. So basically in both of those cases we're reducing false slowdowns. That's the net benefit. And in the first one, it's, it's because it's going to be estimating the time it takes for the object to get across the road. So maybe it won't slow down at all because it estimates that the thing will cross the road before you get there. So that's a win, or was a win, and I certainly experienced that with 10.8. And then adding geometric checks, which presumably means just better modeling and, and uh, more object-oriented modeling and less kind of bag of points here. Added more natural behavior to bias over bike lanes during right turns. I certainly experienced that with 10.8. I was able to take a right turn where a bike lane was present and have less of a jerky, confused response. It, it just crossed over the bike lane naturally in 10.8.1, uh, so that was nice. Ah, the ninth bullet here, improved comfort when yielding to jaywalkers by modeling of stopping region with soft and hard deadlines. Prior to 8.1, if a pedestrian stepped foot into the lane of traffic at all, the car essentially slammed on the brakes where it was, which in, often, in many cases was far too soon, and it just stopped. And this is even in the case where the pedestrian was going to make it across the street well before you got there, the car would just stop. And that's a nice safety feature potentially. Uh, but here what we're talking about is soft and hard deadlines, which means that the car is going to make a smarter decision about when do I need to slow down versus when do I truly need to stop if the pedestrian is still in the road. So those were improvements. I did notice uh, fewer false slowdowns. Um, in particular, and that the uh, smoother handling of the crossing objects and the vulnerable road users, all of that, I, I did notice a little bit of that in 10.8.1. Frankly, if you were going to be stuck on a software package, that wasn't a bad one to be stuck on. Now let's take a look at 10.9 release notes. So that's firmware 2021-44-30-10. First bullet, improved intersection extents and right-of-way assignment by updating modeling of intersection areas from dense rasters to sparse instances 
increased intersection region IOU by 4.2. <laughs> the sparse intersection network is the first model deployed with an autoregressive architecture that runs natively with low latency on the TRIP API accelerator chip through innovations in the AI, AI, AI compiler stack. Holy Toledo, that's a lot. Okay, so I, I picked this apart a little bit um, to try to understand this. The big headline here is that the car is gonna understand an intersection better. So dense rasters means bag of points, meaning it's truly looking pixel by pixel and saying car, 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 free space, free space, free space, pedestrian, 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 you know, and it's just, now we're talking about um, really modeling the intersection as a set of objects, which is a huge step forward. This, this should make a significant difference in what it feels like to go through an intersection in this car. So we're talking about true modeling in 3D space, vector space. The IOU, intersection over union, is what IOU stands for. And all that is, is a, it's a scoring of precision. In other words, you know, how close does a system identified object, so imagine that you see a motorcycle and, in, and the car draws a, a dotted line around the motorcycle and stamps it with a stamp saying motorcycle. And then you have a person try to do the same exercise. The IOU is a zero to one score of precision. In other words, how close did the system identified object match when the person drew the line around the same thing, essentially. So really what they're just saying here is they improved the car's ability to recognize an object by 4.2%. Auto-regressive means that it's gonna take what it's already seen so far and use that to model various potentialities. And it's gonna do that repeatedly as it sits there at the intersection. So as it's at the, it sits at the intersection and vehicles move into the intersection and it sees what their size, shape, movement, what their qualities are, it's gonna take what it's learned in that moment and it's gonna map out a series of potentialities and it's going to remap them and remap them until it's finally moving through the intersection itself. Maybe that'll have an impact on how the intersection looks in the graphics, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll see less flickering because bag of points you you know if a car crosses it hides all the things behind it potentially we'll have maybe a little bit better visualization here with less flickering fewer objects disappearing and then reappearing that'll be interesting to see so number two uh, upgraded generalized static object network to use 8-bit photon count streams rather than 8-bit isp tone mapped images by adding 10-bit interface inference support in the AI compiler stack, improved overall recall by 3.9% and precision by 1.7%. So recall is fewer false negatives, which means missing stuff. So it's gonna, the good news is the recall is improved by nearly 4%. It's going to miss stuff 4% less often and precision fewer false positives, reducing that by 1.7%. I think the, I think the hidden, maybe not the hidden, I think the headline in this one is the 8-bit versus 10-bit um, photon count streams. It doesn't sound like a lot, just two bits, but my understanding, and I'm not an expert in this, is that 8 bits means that you've got about 64 potential values. So imagine 60, it, it's basically the dynamic range of the image. So between white and black, let's say it was a black and white image, between white and black, you'd have 64 grades of gray. Obviously these are not black and white, but 64 potential values. Now 10 bit, just two bits more, we're talking about 1,024 potential values. So typical camera or a phone takes a picture, the um, sensor in the camera receives a certain amount of information. And before that image is shown to a person, a significant amount of that information is filtered out essentially to make a more pleasing image for the eye. The car doesn't need that. And so they're moving away from working off of processed images and now they're using raw images. So they're, they're with the goal being that they get the maximum amount of information from the image sensor. In a sense, this means, I mean, not really, but, but it, in a way it's essentially going to be able to see in the dark or in the opposite, if it's staring into the sun, it'll be able to sense extremely small variations in light. So 
low visibility situations, the car should, should perform significantly better because it's working off of 10-bit image recognition. It should also do it faster because it's not going through and enhancing that image for a human eye. It's taking the inputs directly and using them in its decision making. That means the car's glasses are just significantly better. Like the eyes of the car got a lot, got a lot better here. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty excited about that actually. So made unprotected left turns across oncoming lanes more natural by proceeding straight into the intersection while yielding before initiating the turn. Okay, amen to this one. I'm super excited. I hope that this works as well as it sounds. One of my main gripes with 10.8.1 and all of the preceding versions, if I was taking a left turn, imagine that you're sitting at the stop sign or the stoplight, the car would do just a straight line maneuver to the right lane across the oncoming lane of traffic, which basically means you're going to spend a lot more time in that oncoming lane of traffic than you really a human ever would. A human would typically quickly go through the oncoming lane of traffic and then do a slightly sharper turn into the, into the left. I'm hoping that that's what this means. I'm really excited to see that happen. Bullet number four, improved lane preference and topology estimation by 1.2% with a network update and a new format for navigation clues. I'm, I'm not really sure what this means, to be honest. I don't know if this means that it's going to be able to see speed bumps or speed humps, uh, potholes. I don't know. Curious what that means. If you guys know, feel free to let me know. I'd, I'd be interested in learning more. Number five, improved short deadline lane changes with better modeling of necessary deceleration for maneuvers beyond the lane change. So to me, what this, this is saying is when I'm doing lane changes, the car is going to have a little bit better long-term thinking. It's not just going to try to understand what's necessary to shoot the gap between the cars that are coming behind you and the car that's in front of you to try to get into that lane at the right time. It's going to try to predict what it's going to need to do once it's in that lane so that you don't shoot the gap, get into the, the get through the lane change quickly and then slam on the brakes because there are cars there. Should be better long-term thinking. Number six here, improved future paths for objects not confined to lane geometry by better modeling of their kinematics. Yes, I did some Googling on this one. So kinematics is the study of motion of objects. It's a subdivision of, a me of mechanics. It's all part of physics. Um, so we're applying better modeling to objects that aren't moving within a lane. So I'm imagining this means, you know, the garbage truck that's crossing the lanes that's not in the lines or the bike that's moving between lanes or coming in and out of lanes should be better prediction of what's what an object might be doing if it's if it's not following a path that's clear based on the mapping of the uh, the static objects on the road like the curbs and the lines number seven um, made launches from stop more calm when there is an imminent slowdown nearby this is a nice this is a nice option or a nice improvement if you're at a stoplight it turns green the car punches it but there's a car basically st stalled in front of you or what have you or stopped in front of you for the next light if it sees that that's the case again we're talking about better long-term thinking so it's not just taking what's happening in the moment into account it's taking what's happening in the moment plus what it sees or predicts is going to happen in the future into account so instead of slamming on the gas pedal it's going to accelerate more slowly if it knows that it's only going to accelerate to decelerate shortly after that should be a better driving experience for sure um, number eight and last bullet improved gap selection when yielding to a stream of oncoming cars on narrow roads the two potential scenarios that this might be talking about the first one might be talking about a, a very narrow road where there's only room for one car and picking a place to dodge to the right so that the car can car coming at you can pass. It might mean that. It might mean um, if you're taking a left turn and you're seeing oncoming cars and you're trying to pick a, a gap in the cars to cross through. I don't know which one it is, to be honest, but I'm hoping that it's better guesses about when to go when shooting that gap between oncoming traffic. That's probably the most useful, um, if that's what it is. Let's move on then to FSD 10.10. .10. Um, this same set of release notes applies to 10.10, 10.10.1, and 10.10.2. Um, the firmware involved are 2021, 44, 30, 
and then dot 15, dot 20, and dot 21. I have 10.10.2, and it's 2021 44.30.21. Okay, first one is talking about smoother fork maneuvers and turn lane selection using high fidelity trajectory primitives. So I did a little bit of Googling on trajectory pr pr primitives. The best results that came up were about motion primitives. These are kind of pre-computed motions that a robot can take, kind of like a bag of tricks that it already knows. Um, each trick actually representing many finer grained uh, movements. So it's a library of common movements. Now in a 3D vector space model, like the Tesla is using, these would be more like trajectories, kind of like three-dimensional uh, lines that the car would follow. So for example, in a fork maneuver, it would look like a smooth curved line in 3D space moving from the current lane of traffic into the future lane of traffic. And this would be used kind of, it would pull this trick out of the bag when it saw that it that this trick likely fit, fit the um, fork that it was facing. It would begin uh, proceeding with that maneuver and then make corrections as it goes throughout the maneuver. So this is actually really cool if you think about it. It means it's just it's got this set of maneuvers that it's familiar with doing, and it uses those as starting points that it can correct along the way. Bullet number two, disabling uh, rolling stop. Really, that's all it is. The NHTSA uh, recall around the rolling stop. Uh, the rest of this content is really about, hey, this wasn't just rolling stops all the time. It was rolling stops when they were appropriate and safe and there was nobody around and the speed was slow and so on and so forth more of a <laughs> kind of sour grapes uh, description of the feature there. Number three is improved generalized static object network by 4% using improved ground truth trajectories. So in 10.9, we saw that this was improved by 4% when they moved from raw images, moved to raw images from processed images, and then and when they moved from 8-bit images to 10-bit images. So this is just another improvement by 4%. By 4%. Improvement to what? The static object network, which is exactly what it sounds like. All the things on the road and in the street that don't move, right? The lines, the curbs, the signs. Bullet number four, improved smoothness when stopping for crossing objects at intersections by modeling soft and hard constraints to better represent urgency of the slowdown. So in 8.1, there was something similar uh, specifically for VRUs, vulnerable road users, and crossing objects in the distance. Here we should see more natural slowdowns as we approach crossing objects. So imagine that you're in the intersection, a car is coming at you, you're waiting for the car, you're not slamming on your brakes, you're, you're able to, and then, and then waiting for the car to be fully past you before you begin. Hopefully this means that it's going to project the timing of the object that's crossing through the intersection so that maybe you can begin a rolling start to the maneuver as the car is just passing you, like a human would. Or at least how I'm interpreting that. I hope that that's correct. It should be more natural and there should be less of kind of a delay in the activity in the, in the intersection. Bullet number five, enabling lane changing into oncoming lane to maneuver around static obstacles when safe to do so. Now I've seen my car navigate around static objects uh, more often than not when it shouldn't. So something like this was already in place. Now I'm hoping what we're really supposed to focus on here is when safe to do so, because most of the times when it was navigating around an object that wasn't moving, it was basically, I was stuck in traffic. The car didn't realize that there were other cars in front of me. It thought it was a, you know, a static object that it needed to get around. And then it proceeded to go around it when it really shouldn't. So I'm hoping that the focus here is on the when safe to do so. Bullet number six, improve smoothness for merge handling by enforcing more consistency with previous cycle speed dis control decisions. My understanding is that these cars are on a, are, they cycle at 10 hertz, which means they're making 10, second, uh, 10 decisions per second. What this should mean, and particularly I guess when it's talking about merging, is that when it says, oh, need to slow down, first it's gonna say, well, what was the last cycle's instruction? It was to speed up. So instead of slamming on the brakes or having abrupt changes in acceleration or deceleration, hopefully this should take the previous decisions into account 
and result in more natural acceleration and deceleration during the merge. Now bullet number seven, improved handling of flashing red light traffic controls by adding more caution for events where crossing vehicles may not stop. Here's what I think this means. I think the, I think the car was probably assuming that a flashing red light meant four-way stop. I think what this is accounting for is that, hey, sometimes a flashing red light for you is just a flashing yellow light for the other lane. So it's adding more caution there, which is smart. Um, improved right of way understanding at intersections with better modeling of intersection extents. So in 10.9, we saw in the introduction of intersection modeling as a three dimensional vector versus a bag of points. My guess is that this is just an improvement on that. It's not very specific, so it's unclear to unclear to, and I really couldn't guess what the specific improvement is. So there's the exciting kind of firmware uh, lowdown uh, low from 10.9 and 10.10. I see probably the most exciting things here are the intersection modeling, the more long-term thinking in, in its maneuvering, the better quality vision with the higher bit and non-processed images should mean low visibility situations like darkness, fog, uh, blinding light, so on and so forth should be better. Better prediction of objects that are crossing lanes, both persons and vehicles. Better predictions of objects moving outside of defined lanes. Um, yeah, pretty excited. It really does feel like 10.10 is probably a minor tweak um, on 10.9. 10.9 is probably the more significant upgrade, but we'll get both of them together. I'm excited to get out on the road and see how it, how it feels.